Hey everybody, what's up? So today I am gonna do a time warp from, we're gonna go back to the 1960s and I'll tell you why. Because on Saturday, the SpaceX Falcon 9 shuttle is going to take off and that's gonna be super cool. So if you guys wanna watch it, just tune into TV or YouTube or something. I'm sure it's gonna be all over the news. And I was inspired to do this by, you know, the 1969 moon landing, and I love space, and I wish I could go to space. Sounds like it would be very, very interesting and beautiful. All right, so for the first half, I'm going to read off uh, news and world events from the 1960s. Um, it's seven pages, but I'm not going to go through every single fact. I'll just touch on the most important ones. And then for the second half, I got some 1960s trivia questions for you guys about 1960s history, 1960s movies, and 1960s pop culture. And to me, the 1960s was a really cool decade overall. So you had the moon landing, obviously, in 1969 with Neil Armstrong. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have watched it on TV. That must have been amazing because it was a huge piece of history. Um... But then we also had a transformation of music. So, like, towards the end of the 1950s, uh, rock music started, you know, taking off. And then in the 1960s, it just exploded. And you had, you know, you had The Who and The Beatles, The British Invasion. I'm sure you guys remember that. Then you had, like, Janis Joplin, Credence, Clearwater Revival. So you had many genres of rock. Hard rock, classic rock, pop rock just kind of blew up all over the place, which was awesome. And I know a lot of you guys still listen to these awesome bands, of course. So, we're going to begin in 1960. Now, here's some cool facts in 1960. Cold War. Oh, boy. The Cold War was in full swing with Nikita... Khrushchev banging the shoe on the table at the UN telling us he would bury us. So Russia and the US were in the space race, you know? Who was the first one to go to the moon? I think we got them. Okay, the Kennedy-Nixon debate is the story of the year which was to portend the new power of television in the electoral process. So I guess prior to the Kennedy-Nixon debate, you know, these things weren't really televised. And now they are, which is really awesome. Because then you get an idea of who the candidates are, what they stand for, and it's just, it's more personable like that. Uh, the Berlin Wall is under construction, and the Soviet Union was, keyword, was ahead in the space race. Keyword, was. Uh, Fidel Castro took office that year. It was his first year. Uh, the nightly news aired for 15 minutes at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. The anchors are Chet Huntley, I've never heard of these people, maybe you guys remember them, and David Brinkley on NBC, with John Daly on ABC, and Douglas Edwards on CBS. Now, tell me if my dad is correct in this, because he used to say when he was growing up, he was born in 1945, um... When they had TV, there was only like four channels, I think, and they would only program until, I don't know, some time at night, maybe 8 o'clock or whatever. And then when the nightly news was done, that's it. There was no more programming. So, I don't know, guys. Is that true or not? Is he telling me a tall tale? I'm not sure. All right. Also, we have the... Who was this? Who, who did the twist, everybody? Give you a hint. CC. We had... Chubby Checker, and Don Knotts on television. Black and white TV, of course, because this was before color was invented. Also, Captain Gary Powers' U-2 spy plane was shot down over Russia. So those are the highlights from the 1960s. 1961 is where things get a little more interesting. The cos... Okay, so in Russia, they called um, their astronauts cosmonauts, and here we call them astronauts. So, 1961... Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin becomes the first human in space. And then American Alan Shepard follows a few months later. So even though they kind of beat us to the first person in space, we landed on the moon. So take that, Russia. 1961, also, Soviet and American tanks stand off at Checkpoint Charlie as tensions build in the Cold War in Berlin, Germany. Now, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys remember 
in life in the 1960s. Because like I said, a lot was happening. Music-wise, culture-wise, history-wise. I wish I could have been there. Uh, it says, the Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba begins and it ends two days later in failure. I actually remember learning about that in school. 1961, the Soviet Union detonates a hydrogen bomb. President Kennedy advises families to have a bomb shelter. Now, I'm sure you guys had um, those drills in school. Uh, that must have been really kind of scary and interesting. We don't have them anymore, obviously, but I know like for earthquakes or disasters, they would tell us hide under your desk and stuff like that when we were kids. Uh, not that it really was a big deal here, but I guess you never know. It says, President who? JFK is inaugurated in the United States, 1961. And he delivers the first live news conference, establishes the Peace Corps. Wow, I actually didn't know he did that. Announces his goal to put a man on the moon before 1970. Ah! With the Apollo program and sends 18,000 mil military advisors to South Vietnam. So my dad is a Vietnam veteran in the United States Navy. He was a... What do they call it? He was um, on the USS Arlington. Oh, he was a radialman first class, which I believe doesn't exist as a title anymore. But one of the things he used to do was, you know, receive and send Morse code messages and stuff like that. But after he was done on his assignment on the ship on the USS Arlington, he actually got to participate in the Apollo uh, splashdown, the dry run. So it wasn't with... Um, Buzz Aldrin or, or Neil Armstrong, it was the dry run before that. So that's a pretty cool uh, piece of history. I'm, I'm very proud of my dad. Uh, let's see. Eisenhower, Dwight Eisenhower's farewell address to the nation occurred on January 17th, 1961. And he said, in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex. The potential for disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and persists. Okay, then it says in Israel, Adolf Eichmann is pronounced guilty of crimes against humanity. Well, uh, interesting, I didn't know that. 1962. The first Walmart, interestingly, first Walmart store is opened by Sam Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas. And then, of course, Marilyn Monroe sang our happy birthday song to JFK. I, I, even I remember that. Um, I mean, I wasn't there, but I, I remember it from history class. The Cuban Missile Crisis happened, and Kennedy receives satellite pictures of Russian nuclear weapon silos in Cuba. He orders a blockade of Cuba for six days in October, and the President Attorney General Robert Kennedy and the cabinet huddle in the White House to avert nuclear war. The Cuban Missile Crisis ends when the United States agrees not to invade Cuba and the Soviets withdraw their missiles from Cuba. Cuba. Soviets lose faith. The United Nations condemns apartheid in South Africa and, also interestingly enough, Diet Right and Diet Tab became the first sugarless sodas. Wow. Uh, okay, now we're up to 1963. November 22nd, 1963 became the event day of the year. So much so that most everything else happening in 1963 is mostly forgotten. On August 28th, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. addressed over 250,000 people from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in what has become known as the I Have a Dream speech. Also, woohoo! Well, not really so much because of Russia, but 1963 saw the first Russian cosmonaut. Uh, she became the first woman in space. Uh, the zip, what? The zip code. Oh wow! I didn't even know the zip code, which stands for Zoning Improvement Plan, uh, became introduced. Now, as we know, it's five digits, but I did not know zip code stood for something. That is really interesting. Also, the touch tone phone. AT&T introduces the, the first touch tone phones. Oh, wait, I should say, 
maybe they become more popular. It says they were first used in 1941 and presented at the Seattle World Fair in 1962, but it became popular in 1963. Also, the Easy Bake Oven. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember the Easy Bake Oven. It had, uh, it was like a little, little tiny oven with a light bulb inside, and it came with recipes. Um, from what I never owned one, but from what I heard, the recipes kind of took forever to make. And they were teeny, 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 tiny. But maybe they were fun. I don't know. Did you guys have fun with your Easy Bake Ovens? Uh, and it sold for a price of $15.95. Now, I don't know what that is in today's prices, but I imagine it was expensive. Um, also, it says, uh, The Great Train Robbery takes place in England with $5 million stolen in 15 minutes. That's insane. Okay, so 1964, here's what happened. Uh, the United States Congress passes the Gulf of Tonkin. That's where my dad was stationed, Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, they passed the resolution giving President Johnson war powers to pursue the war in Vietnam. Uh, Nelson Mandela was sentenced to prison. And Nikita Khrushchev is deposed as leader of the Soviet Union. And Leonard... Brezhnev assumes the power. Oh boy. Uh, it says also, the Warren Commission finds that Lee Harvey Oswald, I'm sure you remember that incident, he's the one that assassinated Kennedy, acted alone. Uh, Walt Disney, Walt Disney's Mary Poppins because Disney's biggest moneymaker and winner of five Academy Awards. Elizabeth Taylor has her fifth wedding and marries Richard Burton. How many husbands did she have again? I don't know, like seven, nine, something like that. Um, let's see. Italy asked for help in keeping the Leaning Tower of Pisa from toppling over. Okay, 1965, Bloody Sunday. Uh, 800 Amer African Americans marched in Montgomery, Alabama to protest not being allowed to register to vote. The first of the decade's urban race riots begin in the Watts District of Los Angeles. It lasted for three days with 1,072 people injured and 4,000 arrested. The first rumblings against the war in Vietnam begin with teach-ins around the nation's college campuses. Now, Lyndon B. Johnson makes the Great Society State of the Union speech and signs the Medicare bill making national health care available to the elderly. Uh, 3,500 Marines arrive in Vietnam, followed by large-scale U.S. Army ground units. The original CNC, do you guys remember that? The CNC. It was a little toy. It was like a round toy, I believe. And then you, it had like a little pull on it, and you would pull on it, and then like a sound would come out. If it landed on a cow, it would be like a moo or a cat. It would say meow. Uh, I don't know if I had one, but I'm sure a lot of you guys did. The CNC required no batteries and was driven by pulling a string or lever. The most popular version of CNC is the probably one called the Farmer's. Cosmonaut Alexei Lenov, Lenov is the first human to leave a, spray, a spacecraft and walk in space. Okay, Academy Award Best Actor nominees were Lee Marvin for Col Cat by Bow Bowley Bayou, Richard Burton for The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, Lawrence Olivier, I'm sure you guys remember him, even I know about him, I think his, uh, his big thing was Lawrence of Arabia, uh, he was nominated for the movie Othello, Rod Steiger, The Pawn Broker, and Oscar Warner in The Ship of fools. Have you guys ever seen any of these? I haven't, but maybe I should. Sounds very interesting. Okay, 1966. Let's see. Gandhi, India, Indira Gandhi is elected the Prime Minister of India. Betty Friedan, 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 founded the National Organiza Organization for Women, abbreviated NOW. Uh, the Miranda Rights. The U.S. Supreme Court rules that the police must inform suspects of their rights before questioning them. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, narrated by Boris Karloff, is shown on the first time on TV. Wow, 1966. Uh, popular TV, Mission Impossible and I Spy and the Game Twister was introduced. 
All right, 1967. Gets a little more interesting here. Thurgood Marshall is sworn in as the first black Supreme Court justice. Senator Eugene McCarthy begins his run as a Democratic candidate for president under the banner or withdrawal from Vietnam. Uh, Surgeon Dr. Christian Bernard does the first human heart transplant. Popular movies for that year include The Graduate, I'm sure you guys have seen it, Bonnie and Clyde, Cool Hand Luke, The Dirty Dozen, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Popular TV for that year included The Flying Nun, The Carol Burnett Show. Now, I've seen her, uh, bits and pieces of it, and let me see. That lady is hilarious and multi-talented because she sang, she did comedy, she had very good comedic timing. Uh, Mannix was another TV show, and Ironside. Motor Trend's car of the year for 1967 was the Mercury Cougar. Also, boxing Muhammad Ali is stripped of his World Heavyweight Championship titles and banned from boxing for his refusal to be inducted into the United States Army as a conscientious objector. 1968, we're almost done. We can do some nice trivia. Um... Popular TV shows include Rowan and Martin Laffin, Hawaii Five-0, I definitely remember that, and there's been a reboot of that too for uh, recent times, I think the last couple of years, uh, The Mod Squad and Dick Cavett. Popular movies include A Space Odyssey, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Rosemary's Baby, and of course, Planet of the Apes, which I believe starred Charlton Heston. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Aw, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood premiere. I used to love that show. Won't you be my neighbor? Aw. Motor Trends Car of the Year was the Pontiac GTO. I wonder, have you guys ever even like owned some of these cars? I don't know. The Mercury Cougar GTO. McDonald's introduces the Big Mac, which of course we still have today. 60 Minutes premieres on CBS, which I believe that we also have on TV. Uh, the spy ship USS Pueblo and its 83-man crew was seized by North Korea in the Sea of Japan. And of course, Peggy Fleming. She wins the Olympic figure skating gold medal. All right, 1969, last year, the 1960s, and then we got some nice 1960s trivia for you. This is just a quick refresher. Um, July 21st, Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first human beings to set foot on the moon with the words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Richard Nixon is inaugurated as president. Golda Meir becomes Israel's fourth prime minister and first woman prime minister. Now, it's always wild to me that Israel is just like, like a baby country, you know? I keep forgetting that, like, a lot of these countries found in 1700s, 1800s, whatever, and, uh, Israel's only been a country for, like, I don't know, since 1950s or so, maybe just the early 1960s. Popular TV includes Monty Python, Go John Cleese, Marcus Welby, Hee Haw, Courtship of Eddie's, oh, Courtship of Eddie's father, and, of course, The Brady Bunch. Uh, Mickey Mantle retires at nineteen, uh, at thirty, the uh, the age of thirty-five. Popular movies include Easy Rider, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Midnight Cowboy. They don't shoot horses, don't they? No, they shoot horses, don't they? And True Grit. The car of the year was the Plymouth Roadrunner, and Senator Edward Kennedy drove. Oh, he drove off a small bridge in Chappaquiddick, Massachusetts. Interesting. All right, so now that we went through the 1960s history and world events, we're going to do the 1960s trivia, which actually, if you were paying attention, has some of these answers. So again, who was the first African-American named Supreme Court Justice in 1967? I said, I said his uh, name before. His name was... Third good Marshall. Uh, okay, then it says, what was the name of the conflict in 1961 where CIA trained forces tried 
but failed to invade Cuba and overthrow Fidel Castro. We talked about it earlier. I'll give you a hint. It was named after an animal, an animal that goes oink, oink. It was the Bay of Pigs. What new type of telephone was invented in 1963? We said it before. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You guys remember that? Uh, we still use it, but this was the first year that they became popular again. It was it came out in the 19 it was introduced in the 1940s, but didn't become popular until 1963 by AT&T, which was the the touch tone phone. Um let's see. Who delivered the famous I have a dream speech in 1963? Give you a hint. We said his name before. Three words. Well, four technically in his name, but. Or you could just abbreviate it short. We have a uh, a holiday for him every year. Oh, thank you, Dana. It's okay. It's okay. I'm learning a lot, too. Like, I didn't know that zip code stood for Zone Improvement Program. Did you? Like, that's so weird. I didn't know that. I just thought it literally stood for zip. But, hey, learn something new every day. He delivered, uh, Martin Luther King was the one who delivered from, uh, he delivered the I Have a Dream speech. Oh, let's see. It, so, leading back to what we said before, what did the U.S. Postal Service add in 1963 that is part of every address today? So, when we go to mail out something, we need to have our, what, our name and our address. But at the end of the address, we have to have those whole bunch of numbers. So that the post office knows where to deliver it to, right? I wonder, do you guys think they're going to run out of zip codes? I don't know. Like, I know they started running out of area codes because my, my numbers, my, like, first uh, part of my number, the area code just is like, makes no sense to me. And everybody thinks I live in a different area when I don't. <laughs> so I don't know if you think they'll run out of these. I don't know. But yes, so to deliver mail... You do need a zip code, which was added in 1963. That must have been interesting. Okay. Who, which actor won the Oscar for best actor in his role, for his role in the 1962 film To Kill a Mockingbird? It's GP. That's where his, his initials. And he was a very famous actor. GP. Who could that be? It was a guy's name. Definitely a guy. I'll give you guys like a second to, to process it. I hope you guys are shouting out on your phones <laughs> who this is. I definitely, if you know the answers, I definitely want to hear them. Um, that was Gregory Peck. I don't know if you guys remember him, but yes. Uh, what was the name of Butch Cassidy's gang in the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? Uh, I'll give you guys a hint. It's a term for a place, usually a restaurant or a bar, that's kind of like grody, like a dive bar. You would call it a blank in the blank joint. Blank in the blank. Hmm. Let's see. He, he was called, the gang was called the Hole in the Wall Gang. Um, let's see. Who landed at 17, Ch Dana, you might like this. Who landed at 17 Cherry Tree Lane in the well in a well-known Walt Disney movie? I'll give you guys a hint. Chim Chimmery. Who was that famous nanny that uh, Julie Andrews played? M.P. Who was that character? It was Mary Poppins. Which, by the way, I think there was a sequel, right, with Lin-Manuel Miranda and Emily Blunt. I think it's called Mary Poppins Returns. I haven't seen it, but I've heard very, very good things about it. Uh, what famous actor starred in The Lilies of the Field? I've actually seen that movie. It was very good. And guess who's coming to dinner? His initials are S.P. It's also the name of Lindsay's baby and one of our volunteers. S.P. It was Sydney Poitier. Okay. 
What 1968 movie co-starred a computer named Hal? I think it said, uh, Dave, I don't, something about Dave. Said, I don't think so, Dave. I can't do that, Dave. He was kind of like a computer who came to life. Um, it starts with a specific number, which was the year before I graduated high school. Wow. Let's see if you guys remember what that was. I wonder what HAL stands for. I don't know. I have to look it up. I don't think I've seen this movie in its entirety, but I've seen like bits and pieces of it. And it was called 2001 A Space Odyssey. Alright, so we went through the history and the movies, and now I'm going to do some pop culture of the 1960s. You guys should all know this. What iconic blonde actress uh, was... Aww. She passed away on August 5th, 1962. She sang happy birthday to JFK. Who was that? Who was a famous lady, super blonde hair, very pretty, uh, with the initials M.M. And I think uh, her wardrobe is, like, uh, some of it was, like, donated and stuff like that. And you could actually look, in some museums, you can actually look and, and look at her wardrobe, which is very interesting. I like that. I like the retro, the retro dresses. If you see me at work, I'm probably wearing something like, not, not like her, but something similar. I love that stuff. It's very vintage. I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, her name was Marilyn Monroe. Which former first lady, so she was the wife of the president, married Greek shipping tycoon Aristotle Onassis on October 20th, 1968. I'll give you a hint. She was the wife of JFK. Her name also started with a J, but she was known by her shorter, the shorter version of her name. Who was it? Hmm. Let's find out. It was Jacqueline Kennedy. What year did the Woodstock Festival take place? I've actually been to, um, I've been to the Woodstock site. So, a lot of people think it was held in Woodstock. It was not. It was actually held in a little town called Bethel, New York. Um, they have like a, a museum and everything. I've been up there. It's in the, like by the Catskills. Very, very interesting. And my dad was there. I, it was, I don't know. I, I have to ask him what he remembers about it. Um, and I believe I read something about this where initially that it cost money to go there and then for whatever reason i don't know if maybe because it rained so much or what but they ended up uh, letting everybody in for free and that it caused so much traffic there was traffic trams for miles and people ended up abandoning their cars on the highway and walking to the festival because that's just how crazy packed it was uh, but what year did it take place i'll give you a hint it's the end of the 1960s so what year it was 1969, the same time that we landed on the moon. Oh, of course, we talked about this before, the British invasion. Who was it? Who was that famous group? I'll give you a hint, they're named after a bug. 1964, February, they were on the, I think the Ed Sullivan show, and they just like blew up overnight. Uh, who was in that? Uh, John Lennon. Ringo Starr, George Harrison, and then another person. Uh, who was it? Who was that group? The what? It was the Beatles. What famous TV series debuted in 1966 with the word space, the final frontier? I'll give you a hint. Um, there are many movies. And iterations of the TV show. Uh, Kirk was the captain. Picard later on in the next generation. It really kind of, I guess, like pioneered uh, the sci-fi industry. I mean, there were other movies before that or whatever, but it just it just blew up and made sci-fi extremely popular. Even to this day, I know there was a reboot, or I should say, yeah, a reboot. Um, of the movies with different actors not that long ago and that TV show was Baba 
Star Trek. I'm sure you, what, uh, what does Spock say? Live long and prosper? Something like that. I can show my nerdiness here. All right. This bluesy rock singer was discovered at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. Her initials are JJ. Who was she? And she had a beautiful voice and a lot of hits. JJ. Hmm, let's see if we can figure this out. It was Janis Joplin. Wow. What 1960s artist was famous for his renderings of everyday objects? He had a big, uh, I would call him like a pop artist. And he had, I know he was very famous for this um, painting of Campbell's Soup. And I think he did in like different colors or something. Or I, I think, I'm not sure. But he became very famous for it. And his initials were A. W. A W. Let's see. A W. His name was Andy Warhol. Also, what was this famous boxer's name before he changed it to Muhammad Ali? I'll give you guys a hint. His first name started with the C, and his last name started with the C as well. Who was it? Um, I'll give you guys another hint. You might use this, uh, in pottery. That's his last name. This earthy stuff is used in pottery to make pots and stuff like that. His name was Cassius Clay. Very cool. Who played the role of Norman Bates in the 1960 horror movie Psycho? AP are his initials. AP. Hmm. You know what? I think next time I'm going to do the same thing and have some 1970s like world history facts because I find this fascinating and you know I'm, I'm learning a lot and I wasn't born then but I'm always interested in history and always loving to learn new things. It's good for your brain. When they say knowledge is power, that's definitely true. Um, okay, the actor was Anthony Perkins. Wow. Let's see. What film won the Oscar for the best picture in 1960? I'll give you guys a hint. If you don't live in a house, you might live in a what? You might pay rent on one of these. Very popular to live in in the city because there's no space. Or even out here in Long Island, we have a lot of these. What is that movie? Hmm. It was called The Apartment. Interesting. Uh, let's see. I think I'm good on this. So let's go see what Ollie's doing. I think he set up a, what he called a little town. He's been very good. Oliver! Oh, oh he's watching TV. All right, so I can show you guys what Oliver's been up to. Look at this. He built this all by himself. I'm showing them your trains. I want to show them. You could sh oh, well, this is, we only have like a minute or two, so I'm wait, just showing wait, them. Wait, wait, You could show them. Tell us about your layout. I want to do a crash. You want to do a crash? The crash I was meant to do. What was that? That is so cool. I love, I think he should be an engineer. What do you guys think? Oliver, you want to be an engineer? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh oh, he's got his line of trains here and he derailed them. Yeah, that's Sophie. That's the Santa Fe. Yeah. What is your, I got a question. What is your favorite train? Can you show them something? Yeah, what did we say about the big, what did you tell me about the big boy before? It's 260,000 pounds? Yeah. Wow, the Union Pacific big boy, 4,004? Yeah. No, 4,005. Oh, the 4,005. That's just a coach. Oh, yeah, you want to show me our tunnel? It's a coach, but the, any. Here, and look what we did. Show them the tunnel that we made out of a box. It's okay. I'm just going to show them something. Should we paint them? Yeah. We should paint it later. Look. We you recycled. see? Yeah, we reused the box. It's very good. You see the locomotive inside? <laughs> I derailed it. Should we call it the Oliver Tunnel? Usually they name uh, tunnels after people. Guys, look at that. Look at this elevated. Yeah. Wow. 
You want to show him? Uh, you want to show him Harvey going up? Boop, boop. Where is Harvey? I want to show Emily, but I can't find him. Oh, well, we'll I mean, look for her later. But where's your motorized? Uh, some hurricanes get got jammed. How? Because I put stuff in here. Oh my goodness! All right, we'll pick it out. But here, you can just show. Mm -hmm. Does it work? It does. Oh well, the batteries are out. What no? about that? Who's that? No. Alexi, the experimental engine. Yeah, she can. Does she work? She does, but she can't. She derails downhill. All right, let's well, let's show them what they look like. The uh, layout. Come here, give it to me. Four thousand. No, I show them my Lego switch engine. That's my Lego switch engine. Why is it called the switch engine? What does the switch engine do? I just made it because it's a real <laughs> locomotive switcher. But what does it do? Does it switch tracks? No, man. I think it just switches cars. I don't. Oh, know. it switches cars. So that's why it's called the switcher. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Brain. Wow. Hey! What? This is my town. Oh. I was going to make a town, but I didn't. Look, I like how you put stickers on this thing. Now it really looks like a subway. It says the 456 Grand Central 42nd Street. Wow, very cool. Guys, this looks like a large trope. What are you going to do with it? We can put it on the wall. Oh. Yeah, boop, 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 boop. All right, buddy. I think it's time to go. Wait. Don't pull that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Also, I'm going to show you something I really like doing. What do you like doing? Guys, I hide my uncle chain in the stars, but dad finds it. He doesn't check in here. And you built that train all by yourself, right, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. It took a lot of work. <laughs> what? No, you, the way you said that. Maybe you could build trains in real life. That's my carton. Yeah. Oh, show them the backyard. Well, it's not a nice day, but... It's okay. Can I just... Let me lift up here. Let me lift up the uh, blind. I can show them how the lawn looks. Sure, we mowed it yesterday. Yeah, look, look at it. Doesn't okay, it look better? Open your window to get some fresh air. Guys. It's really important, guys. Getting fresh air. Yep. Look at it. Yeah. And we got a lawn game from uh, Nona's house, I think. That's cool. It's like a, a toss where you have to toss like bean bags onto like a, uh, a bar. So bright. Like try to throw stuff on a power line. Too bright. It's too bright. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, we're done anyway. You want to say bye? Say see you Tuesday? Wait, can I just show? You're showing them a lot. Like, show them this. What? This. Oh, yeah. How about my MTA bus? It's in here. What? He's got an MTA bus, too? Oh, my goodness. Can you, show, can you get it out? It's Where is it? Here. Sure. You're a very lucky kid. You I have a, one baby. Do you have a favorite bus or train? Do you have a favorite MTA subway station? No. Yeah. This is fragile. Here it is. No, that's that. Do you know Oliver? A lot of people at work that drive the buses also drove MTA buses. Do you want me to? Add? There's an MTA museum, I believe. We yeah. should check that out when Guys, you know things get better. Can I just? Well, I think oh. it's time to go, Ollie. Wait, I'm gonna show them no, something. No, 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 no! It's, it's time a tire. to go. It's a, it's a, this is for Lego. It's a Lego mm -hmm. tire. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing us everything, Ollie. Wait, can I show them what? I, can I show them this piece? Guys, this Lego piece is for taking the cap on and off. Ooh, very Yeah, good. that's what. I didn't use that. Okay. All right. You want to say bye? Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us. We're going to do some more cool fun you facts about the 1970s me. next time. I did. I brought. I came over. But I wanted to help you. Okay. So, you know what? How about next time? Sound good? On Tuesday. You're going to be my helper, all right? Can I just... I'm going to show them that. I'm going to show them this. All right. Then it's time to go, okay? Yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah. I put the Lego tire mm -hmm. onto this. Very cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. See you guys on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.